Clean air is a basic human right. It's not a privilege. It's not something that some people should be able to have and others can't because they can't afford it. It's something that we should all have access to. And I think when we don't have access to it, I believe we need to stand up and fight for it. Filtering bunny masks are the latest weapons devised to combat smog, which throw a heavy pall across Britain's big cities every year. The year 1952 is an important one in the history of London's pollution, because that's the year of the great smog. Every year, railways, factories and private homes exude two and a half million tonnes of smoke over England and Wales. The air was thick, a kind of greyish yellow colour, going up your nose and into your lungs, you're coughing and spluttering. It was so bad that the police actually had to carry torches around with them to illuminate their way forward because of just how bad it was. Until smokeless fuels are more widely used and gas and electricity play their full part in homes as well as in factories, smog will continue to shroud... In the aftermath of the Great Smog, in 1952, Parliament passed the Clean Air Act. It was the first and most important step on the way to improving the quality of London's air. I think definitely when you compare it to areas outside of London, you can definitely feel that the air is more polluted. You notice when you ride on the tube that you kind of, when you blow your nose afterwards, it's black, and so it's very, probably not that healthy. <laughs> I think it can be very challenging to be a runner in London because of the air quality. Often what happens is you are fighting for air in the beginning of your run. London is growing. London is still expanding, and in the next few years, we could actually hit the population milestone of 10 million people. How do we deal with that? It's a huge problem. It's essential, therefore, that we come up quite rapidly with new solutions to the energy problem because we cannot just keep relying on, on fossil fuels. Cities can actually, in the future, become self-supplying. It's not only about making it renewable, it's also about first using what's already available. Islington is an incredibly leafy, beautiful, but it's also the most densely populated borough in London, actually, and there are huge issues in terms of air pollution. Our cities are full of heat that's just being released into the atmosphere, and what Green Skies is trying to do is connecting buildings around Islington to capture that waste heat and to use it so that it's not wasted as it is being at the moment. The Green Skies project is a smart local energy system. The clever part of it is that we are sharing, so we're using excess heat that would be wasted and sharing that with buildings that need heat. So it's a sharing economy. Green Skies is bringing together heat, chill, power and mobility into one system. E.ON is one of 15 partners who are collaborating to make this project happen. One of the things that makes the project interesting is that, that we've engaged with the community right from day one. Bringing the community on that journey is hugely important. Work together, collaborate. Teamwork definitely makes things better. So, yeah, yeah it's good that London's coming together to do it. I feel that London is a city going through a transition at the moment. What I love about kind of some of the initiatives that are being put into place now is it's encouraging people to actually live a better quality of life. I was born in Nigeria, moved to London, and I obviously studied in, in London and I became an engineer. In cities like London, I think the diversity is great. Diversity not just in the way people look, but also diversity in the way people think. We're currently sitting in the Port of London Authority building and that's one of two buildings that forms what we call Citygen. The name Citygen is actually City Generation, which uh, strikes back to the history from 
1894 being a coal power station and then subsequently becoming an electrical generation facility for the Smithfield market. Cities are more dense, less space. So you need solutions that can work with the problem of space but still be renewable. So in our situation, we are drilling below ground because there is existing energy in the ground in the London aquifer that's clean and is renewable. So what we're having to do is extract that. We sat here on a challenge regenerating the CityGen networks. It needed to be something clean, give us the air quality that we needed, but also be green and sustainable. I'm James Rook, Head of Energy and Sustainability for the City of London. We're under the road, so this is it drilled. Um, under where we currently are is the London Aquifer. The temperature under the ground is about 14 degrees. We can extract that energy and we can uplift it to usable temperatures, such as, say, 80 degrees. And by doing that, we utilise something called a heat pump. Some of the commercial properties that we supply include the Smithfield Market, which is one of the largest meat markets in Europe, the Guildhall and the Barbican, as well as also the Museum of London. I think E.ON have given us an excellent project with one of the largest heat pump installations in the UK now. The CityGen network at the moment serves the square mile, but I think perhaps the next phase is developing that, extending it and creating a broader network across London. The historical power station of CityGen has undergone a big transformation over the decades. Through the efforts of E.ON and its partners, the originally coal-run power station for Smithfield Market has been upgraded to utilize naturally available energy in order to decarbonize it. Today, CityGen is harnessing energy from a London aquifer, one of many natural reserves located at 200 meters below the site. Its water is continuously warmed by the earth to 14 degrees Celsius. The energy is extracted from the water and passed through the heat pump to create heat at 80 degrees Celsius and cooling at 6 degrees Celsius. The full system can generate renewable energy for 13,600 homes. The energy is distributed through a local grid system. As of 2022, CityGen's CO2 emission will be cut by 30%. All for a happier, greener and cleaner London. The whole idea of our Run Them crew is bringing people together. Lots of different types of people, all with their different ideas about doing things, because they all bring a little bit of energy, which contributes to a much bigger explosion of energy. Companies like E.ON are changing in terms of the type of energy they supply. And I would say to young people, it's great for us to be active and it's great for us to act as a conscious customer. I believe that we need to hold brands responsible for their, for their impact on the environment. It's coming together as one, it's a togetherness. Everyone thinks that they can change the world, but a lot of people think it's not possible. I want to show that that's possible. And I wake up every day remembering that every day is a lesson and every day is a chance to be better and to be great.